Where's your favorite place in the whole world? For Mary, it's when she's up on the hillside at the highest point of her farm, with her sheep in the fields around her, the wind in her hair, and the sun in her face. When she's up there, all her problems feel very small and far away. Mary seems to have a lot of problems at the moment. Her dad won't listen to her ideas for how they could do things differently on the farm. One of her kids just got COVID at school. And they're all worried about the future of the farm business. Now that the UK has left the EU and the payments they rely on are to be phased out. But there's another problem that everyone seems to be talking about these last few years. Cows and sheep emit methane in their burps, and this apparently goes up into the atmosphere and acts as a potent greenhouse gas. Mary always used to think of climate change as being a problem to do with fossil fuels, but now it really feels like livestock farmers are in the spotlight. Everyone seems to think this is a huge problem, but no one can agree on what the solution is. Mary was on the phone to her cousin last week, and he sheepishly told her he's decided to become flexitarian because he wants to eat a more sustainable diet. He thinks the problem lies with people demanding too much red meat, and we need to educate and nudge people towards picking more plant-based dinners. Meanwhile, there's this fancy agri-tech company who keeps sending Mary targeted ads. They say they can make her flock more efficient through genetics. Reducing methane is all about the feed conversion ratio, they say. You just have to look at the numbers. It's science. Speaking of science, Mary saw a guy on TV recently who was saying we don't actually need animals at all. We can just produce meat in a laboratory. No more messy cows and sheep burping and farting. Just giant shiny bioreactors and farmers in white coats. Then there's this other farmer that Mary met through a Facebook group. She's always posting articles about agroecology or sending around petitions against Monsanto or trying to get Mary to write to her MP about the latest trade deal. The food system is broken, she's always saying. We need to farm in harmony with nature. Then of course, there's people like Mary's dad. 70 years old and still technically the principal farmer, he just wants to farm the way he always has done. Mary used to see herself as part of a long line of farmers, going back generations and stretching forward into the future. But now, that future feels a lot more uncertain. She's not sure what the world's going to look like when her kids are grown up. We need natural science research to understand questions like, what is the optimum feed composition to reduce methane in cows' burps? Or, What's the best growth medium for producing a lot of meat in a laboratory? But we also need social science research to understand how these solutions fit into people's complicated and messy real worlds. I'm a social scientist and my research aims to identify the discourses behind the different solutions to methane emissions from cows and sheep. Discourses are really just stories and they're stories that have power. They can create heroes and villains. They can make certain people responsible while making other people invisible. And they can build different visions of what the future could look like. I'm finding these stories by analysing newspaper articles, interviewing lots of people in the UK livestock sector, and working with cow and sheep farmers on a participatory photo project. I believe that by speaking to people like Mary, we can identify the stories that could drive sustainable and equitable change in our food system. Stories like that have the power to change the world.